So for the last three years, my primary web browser that I use on a daily basis has been the Brave browser. And before that, the primary browser I used was Mozilla Firefox. I was a Firefox user for about 20 years. And before Firefox came into existence, I was a Netscape Navigator user, you know, way back, you know, like in the 90s. And, you know, I haven't really tried that many different browsers because I was always kind of on that Netscape slash Firefox train for so long. And then when I made the switch, to Brave, I just kind of fell in love with Brave. It, it kind of was more of a simple, minimalistic kind of browser, especially in the early days, because, you know, it didn't have a ton of extra features. Mainly, it was focused on being security and privacy centric. But really, the main reason I switched to Brave initially all those years ago was the fact that it had a built in ad block system because I didn't have to install any plugins or anything to get ad block. You know, a lot of times on browsers, you go and install something like uBlock, which is an extension that just gives you ad blocking features. But on Brave, the browser itself itself has ad blocking built into it and for me as a video content creator it's very important that all of my web browsers have ad block because I record my desktop all the time and I record my desktop sometimes when I'm actually in a web browser and I don't want any weird ads popping up I don't want any multimedia ads playing for one thing it's a bad look it looks very unprofessional when I'm recording my desktop and all of a sudden an advertisement comes up and starts playing plus if it's a multimedia ad that's got some music that could cause me some issues with YouTube's copyright strike mechanism so it's best that my browser has an ad block system that works and is built in. Some other reasons why I really love Brave include the Brave search engine. So the Brave search engine you could use on any browser. It's not necessarily tied to the browser itself. You could use Brave search on anything, but you know, the search engine, the Brave search engine is really nice. It's become very good. I actually like using the Brave search engine much more so than something like DuckDuckGo, for example. Another feature they added about a year or so ago was the Leo chat assistant, which is your AI chat assistant. And this thing here in recent months has gotten very, very good as well. They've been adding some new features. One of the cool things you can do with the Leo AI is that you can now choose between different large language models. So right now they have four different language models built into Leo. The Mixtral language model is the default one that they use, but you can choose between Claude 3 Haiku, Claude 3.5 Sonnet, or the uh, Llama 3.18B large language model. Oftentimes I do choose llama and let me show you how I might use this in action let me go to this page here which is a page from the uh, ZSA website ZSA is the maker of the Moonlander keyboard and the ErgoDocs keyboard this page was uh, about me uh, they actually featured me on their website uh, some years ago and what I could do one of the cool things you can do with a chat assistant like Leo is you can ask for a summary of the page give me a summary of the text. And you can see I get a very short little summary of what this page is about. I get a sentence telling me what this article is about and then I get four key points, right? They gave me four bullet points here. And you could ask it to find specific things in the page. If it was a very lengthy document, you could ask it, for example, does the page contain a link to YouTube? I can type correctly. No, the page does not contain a link to YouTube. However, it does mention the DistroTube channel on YouTube and Odyssey. And that really is one of the cool things about these chat assistants that I'm really enjoying is you can actually do some cool stuff, not just in your regular web pages, but even documents, for example, a document like a PDF file. Just, this is just a random PDF that I found in a quick Google search just to have an example PDF. And if I open the Leo chat assistant, I have that key binded, by the way. I'll show you how to add the uh, key bind to the Leo AI as well, because by default, there is no key bind to open this. But this is a Linux uh, tutorial about some of the basic uh, GNU core utils like CD and LS and things like that. Let me ask the chat assistant here. Does this document mention how to rename a file? which we know with the Linux uh, GNU core utils, it would be with the MV command, the move command. Yes, the document does mention how to rename a file using the move command, and it gives you the example right here. So it 
basically found somewhere in this PDF where it talks about the move command and gave me what I was looking for without me having to look for it. Now I mentioned that I had a key binding here to open and close the toggle the, the Leo chat assistant on and off. Let me show you where this is. Inside the Brave browser, you can open this link here, brave colon slash slash settings slash system slash shortcuts. And this is the page with all your key bindings. So everything that you could have a key binding set to in Brave, uh, and it's a very lengthy list. If I scroll down, you can see how many things you could actually set a key binding to inside the Brave browser. Now, one of the unfortunate things about the Leo Assistant is that by default, it does not have a key binding set. When you search for Leo, it will appear here, but there was no key binding set. I set mine to Control I. Why Control I? Uh, it was something easy that wasn't used and I wanted the control plus a key control I is just very easy to hit on the keyboard and that is how I am toggling that on and off now one of the cool things about the Leo AI assistant is that it is secure out of the box and it's a uh, privacy respecting out of the box as well for one thing, anything you do as far as any query that gets sent through the Leo AI, it's all done using a reverse proxy. So basically all your requests are proxied through an anonymization server. Basically they're trying to keep you anonymized. So there's no way to really track who is typing the things in AI, right? No, you, they don't know who exactly is asking what. According to the Brave website, you know, they don't, they don't save any conversations. All the responses from the AI, uh, they're not saved in any way. No login or account information is, is uh, saved or accessed. Also, for those of you that are using uh, the Leo premium service, because there is a subscription service you can sign up to to get some extra features with the Leo AI. If you sign up for that service, you're also uh, kind of anonymized because if you sign up for Leo premium, you're issued some unlinked tokens that validate your subscription using Leo. So again, that's just an extra step that kind of ensures your privacy. Now, I know not everybody is a fan of these AI assistants, but honestly, I love them, you know. And again, if you don't have a need for it or you don't want to use it, I mean, it's not like you have to the, use the Leo AI assistant. I mean, it's there if you want it. Same thing with the Brave search engine. If you're fine using Google as your search engine, keep using Google, right? You don't necessarily have to use it. There's a lot of features in every piece of software, but especially web browsers, because web browsers are kind of big programs. There's a ton of features in any web browser that most people are just never going to use. One of the more interesting features is uh, now they have the ability to do vertical tabs. They added this about a, a year or so ago, the vertical tab feature where you could have vertical tabs. I could actually collapse this. So if you have a bunch of tabs, you know, you can save a lot of space by instead of having it horizontal tabs across the top of the browser you now have vertical tabs you know across the left hand side or if you wanted to you could put it on the right hand side it's customizable where you put this sidebar with your vertical tabs it's also customizable where you have the uh, Leo AI showing up I have it on the right side but I could easily set it to the left side of the browser as well so you can customize these things for me I don't really care for vertical tabs it just doesn't do much for me i know for many people they prefer vertical tabs for some reason for their workflow it just works better for me i like horizontal tabs but you, again you have choices and again from, from what people tell me that do love vertical tabs, that the way the Brave browser handles vertical tabs, a lot of people really do like it. So if that's something that you want out of a browser is that vertical tab feature, maybe give Brave a try. For those of you that are really heavy into plugins, I know a lot of you guys, you know, really install a lot of plugins what you could do just do a search for chrome extensions i'll do a search in google and let's go to extensions chrome web store and just search for your favorite extensions that you install in any chromium based browser and they should install and work just fine in brave as well now i am not big on browser extensions i almost never install extensions i have just like two or three extensions installed in my browsers and the extensions i tend to install are centered around 
background video content creation for example I know pages with a white background pages with a lot of white are hard for you guys to watch and read on camera I know you guys watching this video with this page I'm on right now you're probably being blinded by this white light so I have this plugin installed called dark mode now dark mode if I go to the menu it says can't read or change this site's data so the Chrome extension store it can't do anything with but most websites it can actually change their background if I go to Arch Linux for example the Arch Linux website and go to dark mode and tell it um, go ahead and change to dark mode on all archlinux.org sites and you can see I just changed this from being uh, a white background with black text to a dark background with light text and of course I could toggle that back off if I you know didn't want this but obviously for a video content creator if I know I'm going to be uh, spending some time on a page with a lot of uh, black text on a white background typically I reverse it with that dark mode extension and one other thing that I get asked all the time people want to know why my home page for brave does not look like the default home page for brave is because I have replaced the default uh, home page slash new tab page in brave with an extension called tab bliss if you go to the Chrome extension store just search for tab bliss by the way this works on Firefox based browsers too in the Firefox extension store you can find tab lists so they've got a Firefox version as well and this gives you a very customizable new home page new tab uh, that you can set up you can arrange it with links and you say I've got a Google search and a weather date and time etc you could put uh, random quotes and it's very customizable you just go to the little cog wheel here and there is a ton of stuff you can customize as well as the images I've basically chose my my wallpapers directory as a random image that will be created here on this new tab page so that is the tab list extension so that's just a little bit of the reasons why I initially started using the brave browser and some of the reasons why I continue to use the brave browser it just keeps getting better and better so if you're looking for a new web browser maybe give brave a try I think you'll be pleasantly surprised uh, if your current browser for whatever reason is just not blowing you away you know you want to try something else I think you'll be happy with with Brave. Brave, by the way, cross-platform. Of course, it's available on Linux. It's available on Windows and Mac as well, as well as mobile. I actually use Brave as my web browser on my Android phone. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Matt, James, Steve, Ormer, Dragon, Darloff, Daedalus, GDR, George, Lee, Matthew, Methos, Erion, Paul, Peace, Archon, Fedora, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Solastri, Tenrin, War, Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys. This quick look at what's going on with Brave these days. This wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by the community. If you guys want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software like Brave, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.